All right, let's start from the top down. Let's start from the top. In the world of sports, anything can happen. I remember when this shot went in and thinking right, in that chat. moment, I just witnessed history. Or when this shot had the entire basketball world standing still for what felt like an eternity before falling in and causing a chain reaction of events that would change the course of the NBA. Or the exact moment we all knew a 3-1 comeback in the finals was brewing. When we knew something big was going to happen and we would all be there to witness it. But despite all the seemingly impossible feats that we've seen take place, of all the improbable comebacks and unlikely stories, there is still one endeavor throughout NBA history that has yet to be accomplished. The 0-3 comeback. Oh a de mm. <laughs> Why you gotta start off with that, gang? Damn! <sighs> we were so close, man. We were so far deficit that 151 different teams have found themselves in and none of them managed to pull off including the team that i bet on the heat are going to the nba finals uh. and three in the eastern conference finals against miami the boston celtics were given a 12.5 percent chance of winning the series odds that seemed unrealistically high considering no team has ever pulled off the dreaded 0-3 comeback but after rallying together and rattling off three of the most important wins of their season the celtics found themselves with an opportunity to make history coming off of one of the most improbable last second buzzer beaters to i hate how game seven just i hate it when twitter is right number one but like game seven just got rid of any historical significance of this shot now it's just another game winner in the playoffs now it looks like yo the celtics were lucky to game out of game six but i'm saying if we won game seven <sighs> i guess we'll never know insane bro win game six they had all the momentum the heat were deflated everything was in boston's favor my playoff prediction had somehow been resurrected hope was still alive and so what do the celtics do they put together one of the most piss poor game seven performances piss i've poor game ever seven seen in my life if you never hear me utter jalen brown's name on this channel again do not wonder why Here's an idea. Learn how to dribble a basketball and stop shooting threes. And I would give Jason Tatum a pass for his game seven performance since he was playing on a bum ankle. If he didn't shoot two for 18 from three in his last three games. 11% from three in consecutive playoff elimination games. Yeah, that's why I don't have much slack for this team either with the way that they played. Cause like, yo, y'all didn't have to go down all three. Like y'all could actually just played well in the first three games, and now y'all want to complain in the last game, this, that, and the third. Also, mind you, Gabe Vincent was out for one game. Jimmy Butler's ankle was not fully healthy going into the series. Um, I feel like I'm missing another injury in there. So, uh, Victor Oladipo, Tyler Hero. Miami wasn't 100% healthy, too, so I, I don't want to hear that shit, man. Like, God damn brother hit a shot and don't even get me started on caleb first team all nba martin god forbid he just plays like a normal player against the team that i bet on no he has to morph into a human flamethrower for seven games and rip the hearts out of whatever boston fans are left after this monstrosity i like this energy from seen jimmy caleb though. splits from the <laughs> eastern conference finals 19 points per game 60% from the field and 49% from three. At some point, they they got to run out of juice, right? Like, at some point, chat, at some point, they got to run out of juice, right? Like, they can't keep doing this. They can't keep doing this. God. Stop hitting shots. I, you know what, chat? You know what? I'm I'm low key at a point where I low key want Miami to win, just so like I can say it wasn't it wasn't our fault. You know what I'm saying? Like Miami was just on some crazy astronomical outlier run. You know what I'm saying? But God, that's seventy four percent true shooting percentage for the series. 
The man makes $6 million a year and outplayed Mr. $100 million contract second team all NBA Jalen Dribble off my foot Brown. I am sick to my stomach, but I gotta give credit where credit is due. The Miami Heat are tough. They've got a great team with a bunch of guys ready and willing to do whatever it takes to win. There's no ego, there's no drama, it's just Not great basketball. Ego. A few weeks ago, I said that as sports fans, we love the underdog story, despite the fact that it very rarely happens. Well, it just did. Because the Miami Heat are just the second eight seed in NBA history to make it to the NBA Finals. The last team to pull this off were the New York Knicks in the lockout season of 1999. But what the Heat have done this postseason has actually never been done before. Because the worst regular season team to ever make the finals in the modern NBA were the 1981 Houston Rockets, who somehow made the finals despite having a losing record in the regular season. But this year's Heat team is the first team since the 1959 Minneapolis Lakers to make the finals while carrying a negative point differential throughout the regular season, which means the Heat were essentially a below average team that somehow made it to the nba finals yo sh shout out to the 2010 celtics man i, ju I just want to say that i think a lot of people look back at 2010 and just look at yo that was rondo kg paul and ray and you know tsk, super team nah bro we were underdogs going into that cleveland series we were underdogs going into that orlando series um we were we was old and we had a doc rivers uh, we had Doc Rivers as our coach. So, all right, Cardiac. Yes, they do. Pe people call the 2010 Celtics a super team. Now, I disagree, but yes, they do, bro. So how does a team with absolutely no business even leaving a mark on the postseason manage to make it to the final stage just four wins away from an NBA title? Well, I want to take a moment to touch on a subject that I don't think gets talked about enough. The Alpha. Dumb. You know how in modern NBA discourse, whenever anyone brings up Mamba mentality, they're laughed at and dismissed like whatever they're referring to doesn't actually exist, or that it's even a misconception of some sort. To this day, especially older fans of the game will talk about how the greatest players of all time had the, don't make me say it, killer mentality. Oh I thought I was about to say aura. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I thought I was about to say aura. Over the years, this was a critical talking point among NBA fans on why some players found success in defining moments while others continued to fall short. This narrative in particular began to lose its credibility sometime over the last half decade or so, as any player who didn't win a title was labeled as soft or lacking the killer mentality, despite there being about a million other factors that were failed to be considered. But we just saw firsthand what grit and determination and integrity and this elusive killer mentality that we've been dismissive of for years can do for a player and a team. Is Jimmy Butler more talented than Jason Tatum? Man, ooga fucking booga, bro. God damn, what is this argument? No, and it's not particularly close. Is Caleb Martin nearly as talented as Jalen Brown? Well, after this last series, I'd sure as hell say so, but really, no. Jalen is the far more talented player. Should Gabe Vincent and Max Struess be starting throughout an entire conference final series? Well, if talent was the deciding factor, then no, but it's not. When you've got a leader who is willing to do whatever it takes to win and makes no excuses, rises to the occasion and has the guts, no, the audacity to take on any challenge that stands in front of him, that mindset becomes contagious. Slowly, everyone on your team begins to believe, even if it's irrational, that yeah, they too bro. are capable of anything. Yeah, One of the reasons why I have Kobe Bryant ranked so high among my all-time greatest players, among it's other reasons, was his attitude towards the game. His fearless approach to whatever or whoever stood in his way was, at times a fault, sure, but it was always daring and unashamed. Kobe missed a lot of shots, but one thing he never did was be afraid to take them. Not even for a moment in his entire career did he ever doubt himself. Kobe, similar to Michael Jordan and what we're seeing in Jimmy Butler. This is insane. This is a... Uh... <laughs> Alright, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jimmy Butler. <laughs> 
God. Denver, take care of these dudes, man. Please. <laughs> take care of these dudes, man. God. Was the alpha of all alphas. If they were on your team, winning was not guaranteed. But one thing that was certain. This motherfucker is getting gas for a mid series against the Knicks and against the fucking Celtics, bro. Rob Caleb Martin of the ECF Finals MVP or whatever the fuck it is. Oh my god. Was that if they're going down, they're going down swinging. What I saw from the Celtics, and even on a larger scale throughout the league, is almost some sort of mass extinction of the killer mentality. We always talk mass about extinct? talent and potential and skill sets, who can get a bucket, but what about the guy who refuses to lose? How many of those guys exist in today's in You know, you know, and this is this is what I'm talking about. If he really refuses to lose all this fucking time and he's been this alpha all this time, how come he got zero rings? Huh? How come he got zero rings? If he refuses to lose so much, where that ring at, buddy? What was that shit in Game 6 versus the Lakers in 2020? God! NBA. Sure, Jason Tatum is talented, but is he truly willing to go to hell and back to win? The idea of a player who possesses an unshakable will to win at all costs, a killer mentality. Yeah, and if he's really that guy, he better win this fucking series, dog. I, I, with all this talk... Will to win. Man. Is that right, just dude. some sort of myth right, built dude. up on nostalgia or Man. personal bias or narrative? It is a real, tangible thing. It's funny because Jimmy Butler isn't Luka. nearly the best player in the Luka. NBA, and yet we can't help but to see shades of Michael Jordan in him when he's on the court. It's not because he's an era-defining talent. It's not because he can defy gravity or inspire an entire generation. It's because he's a winner, a leader, the bedrock of what every championship team needs. He backs up every word that comes out of his mouth. He doesn't make excuses. He leads by example, and he will do anything to win. And this isn't just some. So say, so say he's winning the finals then. So say he's winning. If he if he comes out of this video and says the Nuggets are gonna win. I mean, I'm gonna put the two. Brandon Gutierrez for five dollars. Tatum. This is where I put my rings if I had them. All right, bro. Some reactionary take on the outcome of these games. Even if the Celtics won this series against the Heat, I still think the vastly talented duo of Tatum and Brown, like many other players, would have accomplished it off of sheer talent and possibly execution. But what happens when the shots stop falling? What happens when the defense figures you out and your bag isn't enough? What happens when it gets quiet and everyone's looking at you, waiting for an answer? Whenever, whenever a player or a team wins, the reaction is always the same. Excitement, joy, relief. But you might find out a lot more by paying attention to how a player reacts when they lose. You can't fake this. Are they genuinely upset? Are they hell-bent on getting better, being the best? Sure, there's not a single player who takes joy in losing, but what about the player who is tormented by loss? If a player- What? No, not, not, not. This is, first of all, this is insane glazing, but not with Jimmy Butler, bro. When for three straight games, when this motherfucker was getting blown out, all I saw in my timeline was, hey, Jimmy's smiling, man. Jimmy smiling. What is there to be worried about? Hmm? This is Jimmy Butler, man. C come on, bro. Come on, Player dude. lacks this quality. I'm not sure if talent will simply fill the gap. I don't know. There's just something about a player who cannot accept losing. You know it when you see it. And you sure as hell know it when you don't. Either that, or I'm just mad that the team that I bet on fell short of a championship for the second season in a row. I hate the Celtics. Not too much, bro. Not too much. God! Jimmy, you're killing me, buddy! Great video, though. The editing was insane.
but jeez. Oh my god. <laughs> Didn't even make a finals prediction. He just said he was wrong about the Celtics and then glazed Jimmy for like six straight minutes, yo. Come on! Come on, chat. <laughs> yo, come on, bro. Come on. Come on. Didn't even make, <laughs> didn't even make a prediction, dude. Holy. Holy, bro. God damn. That was a funny video, though. Shout out to the 460 in the building. <laughs> that was an out of this world click. Yo, come on. Come on, chat. I know, know y'all spamming Cope in the chat. But, yo, that was an insane glaze job, bro.